All right, so I am uh, back at the yard again. I took a couple weeks off. Um, actually, I just took one weekend off, but I didn't work on it during my work week at all. I've been working overtime and uh, trying to get some workouts in just to have a little bit of normalcy while I do this. Uh, this job is turning out to be a bit bigger than my wife and I uh, expected, a little bit harder, but uh, yeah, what are you gonna do? It'll get done, it's just work. So after taking last weekend off to just you know get some workouts and uh, I read some comic books and we just kind of hung out and didn't work on the yard, took the dog for a walk, little things like that, just have a normal weekend, a little stress-free weekend, I'm back at it. So the status is right now I have six zones in, as far as the poly goes. Of those six zones, only two of them have all the heads connected, all the sprinkler heads, and those are my front two. So what I'm doing now uh, is I'm going to wire my front valves, there's two of them, and I'm going to wire the booster pump. And we're actually finally going to test all that. Hopefully I can get to that this weekend. Um, it's just making all the connections. Uh, I have to connect my uh, low pressure switch. Um, so I'm kind of excited about this because now I'll see what my pressure's at. I'll be able to see where my heads are. And if, uh, if everything, once everything's lined up and has the distances and I see if everything's where I need it to be, I can bury everything in the front and that front will be uh, done and then I can stop watering it with a yeah, with a hose, frankly. Uh, that's a little bit old and it's, it's hot now. We're into the low 90s, which is hot for Utah. I mean, 20 years in Vegas, 90 feels like nothing, but for Utah, it's warm and I, I don't want to be out there working in this. So in any case, I'm going to start wiring today and uh, I'll uh, show you what I've got uh, planned. So this is the outside of the utility room and that's the hole that I've dug. So I have to cut those wires that are kind of coming out of the wall there and then uh, be drilling through that and eventually have to find something to patch that with. I guess I'll, uh, looks like whoever did, drilled it used some concrete patch. Uh, I'll probably go with the same. I have some of that, so maybe. I don't know yet. I haven't really thought that far ahead. And then I, uh, I trench this out to meet the main trench. It'll go around the front and uh, it'll go, there'll be a valve box over here and then the rest of it will run that way and then eventually it just divides up and goes in different places. So I went and got all my wiring yesterday. So uh, we're kind of on our way with that, and uh, right now I'm going to uh, drill that hole, and then I'll uh, show what that looks like after. And this is the after product. There was some kind of a black epoxy on the outside. I ended up having to go from the inside out because I couldn't quite figure out. There was a, like an epoxy with a uh, concrete patch over it, and then uh, it was just a little difficult to see where the wires were coming in. There was quite a bit of that stuff, so I'm going to go down and show you how I... Uh, I ended up going in through the inside. Uh, I cut out the pipe that I had in the way and I uh, that was pretty quick with the Sawzall. And then I just drilled through the inside. So I've got the hole and I can run my wiring when I'm ready now. And uh, that's the last real um, prep thing I had to do. So at this point, it's just getting everything put together. And for the sake of completeness, I had to disconnect my uh, this uh, vent for my uh, dryer and cut this chunk of uh, pipe off but uh now i've got my hole all cleared out and i uh, drilled through to clean it out got all the epoxy out of there so that guy's ready whenever i'm ready to run my wire so a little bit easier than i thought it was uh, still took a little bit of time but but generally a pretty easy job so that that's one more task done and uh now on to uh the next thing i guess <laughs> All right, so I've got my wire right here that I'm going to be using for uh, one run is going to be for the uh, booster pump, and then I'm going to run a second line that'll go to the front for the two valves. There's just four strands in there. I only need uh, two for the booster pump, and I need uh, uh, two for the valves, actually. Um, three total for the valves, though, because each valve head gets one, and then there's a common, so it's three total. Uh, this is going to be for my low-pressure switch, which is this guy, and it'll have this wire in it, so there'll be a connection coming in one side from, uh, there's 240 coming in, and then the other side, it'll connect uh, and go through the booster pump, and this will actually just sit in. I'll uh, screw in uh, this little nipple here, and that'll sit in and feel the water pressure and the water will come through and the water pressure uh, drops below, uh, what is it, 12 PSI, I think. Uh, it'll uh, 
it'll actually shut the uh, booster pump off and keep it from burning up. This is just the pressure, pressure gauge I have to put on there. Uh, I just haven't done any of that yet. And then just some of the other equipment, my wire strippers and so forth. So, uh, so I'm on my way. And this is a, just a, this is going to be all outdoors. So I'm going to put this, this uh, wiring, which has this thick coating on it, but I want it even better. So I'm just bought some of this aluminum that'll go through and uh, that'll protect it. And I'm going to put these guys, they go in the box here. And then that way there's really nothing exposed. And ideally I can get a lot of time out of all this stuff and not ever have to do this again. <laughs> in any case, uh, I'm going to go start wiring. So uh, I'll start showing you as I get some stuff done. All right, so I've got my first uh, wire th run through the wall. Um, I fed it to the uh, booster pump out front. Nothing's connected yet, but I just wanted to show you. I got this coming in here. Um, let's see if I can get that a little clearer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect it to the common, and then there's a master valve, uh, this nut here. This is the common. I'll connect those, and those will go to the relay out front. And then this uh, wire is actually just so both of them, it just... Uh, you know, like a daisy chain, it just connects it to the other, so I don't need to wire both of them separately. Um, that way the booster pump, and these are going to be for my non-drip one and two. They're going to be my non-drip uh, valves. So those are all the sprinkler heads, and I need those to have a booster pump so they have enough pressure. And then I'm going to use this third one for... Uh, the drip system uh, once I put that in next year. I'm not doing it. Originally was gonna, but this is taking so long I, I don't want to waste my time with that. So so go back. Uh, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna get this thing uh, clamp it in place somewhere down here and then I have to go put the wire on the other end. I have to feed it through the rest of the way and just tighten it up and uh, get it into my trenches and then I'll uh, cut it and I can connect the booster pump uh, at least this end of it the relay to the relay and then uh, I'll start uh, the after I do that I'll start the uh, valve I think or I might actually end up wiring the low pressure switch today I'm not sure one or the other I haven't figured it out but anyway I'm gonna go outside and do that now all right so I've got my wire coming out of the basement hole the wall uh it's snaking through here and then there's so much contrast the sun's blasting but it's going to follow the trench all the way up to the front of the house to the side where the booster pump is uh, i've got it all snugged up and now i just got to go cut it and connect it on that end and then i'll go back downstairs into my utility room and we'll uh, connect it there so let's go uh, cut that and connect it okay so my wire comes from the backyard through this trench it's coming up under my legs here and let me sit down so I can explain what it's going to do. It's going to feed into this to protect it because I'll cover it up to here and then that'll feed up into my booster pump connector. It'll come through here and it's going to go up through a hole here and connect to these here and this is my relay. So first I'm just getting this. This will be the signal coming in that'll uh, trip the booster pump. It'll tell it to turn on when the uh, when any of the valves turn on from the turn on from the timers downstairs. So I'm gonna unscrew these. This, this is the old wiring. This uh, black and white right here. And then we're going to uh, feed all that in. I still have to cut this guy. Uh, I gotta size it. So all I'm gonna do is just trace it to that point and probably give it a little extra just to make sure, then I'll strip it down and we're gonna connect it. And uh, then we'll go downstairs and connect the uh, timer side of it. And my booster pump will have at least a signal to get it started. Then I have to disconnect these. These are the old wires. They're gonna come down here. And eventually I'm changing all this out just cause this is the old wiring. Uh, I don't wanna redo everything and put new wiring on, but this will connect to my low pressure switch, which is not on yet. And then from the low pressure switch, it'll actually connect to a hole on the backside here. And that'll serve as the relay that uh, essentially shuts the timer on and off. So let's uh, get to wiring. All right, I got my uh, booster pump connected on this end, the 20 volt, uh, whatever, four volt timer in this red and white wire. So now, and you can see it's uh, coming down into there and out this end and then that goes through the backyard uh, to the basement. Now we're gonna go downstairs and connect it at the basement and uh, at least that tedious chore will be done. It's, it's tough working here. I can't sit anywhere comfortable. It's killing my back. Anyway, uh, I'm gonna go down and connect the other end and then uh, 
I think when that's done, I'm probably going to come up and try to do the re, uh, the low pressure switch today instead of running the valves. I want to get a low pressure switch done. That that thing's like an albatross to me, so I just want to get it done. Anyway, we're going to do that next, so uh, I'll be back. Okay, so I'm in my basement, and I've got my wire right here coming in from my uh, booster pump. And I have a couple things going on. So first, I'm going to connect it to my first timer. And then I'm going to daisy chain it to this timer so I didn't have to run two strands to two individual timers. It's easier to use a, you know, one foot, whatever size strand here. Um, originally, I was going to leave the strand that's already connecting them. But one of them is white, one of them is black. I'm using white and red. And I don't want to try to remember that the, that's what that is. I know it's simple, but I don't remember small stuff like this. And I don't want to write it down and go looking for notes. So I'm just going to make them the same color. It'll be easier for me to trace it later if, if I ever need to. Um, so I'm going to get rid of this, uh, this white and black lead here and the same thing there. I'm going to use the white and red on a different piece of small wire I already have cut. And then, uh, I took a picture when I connected it outside because one of these is your common and the other one is for your, uh, it's called your MV, which is your, uh, I think it's called, I think MV is master valve. And, uh. Let me see. Yeah, it's master valve. So you want to make sure you're consistent in your connection. So, for example, I have my white as my common connected outside. So I want to make sure I connect it as my common here. And the same thing with the red. I want the red connected to the master valve here. And it's in my relay. It's connected that way out there. And that way I don't have any issues. Um, and then I'm going to do the same thing, daisy chain these. So uh, I'm going to go do that right now. And then I'll show you the work when it's done. All I got to do is strip the wires and uh, screw them all in. And, and then we're done. And that's at least for this part. And then I'm going to go work on the yellow pressure switch. So as far as connecting these wires, all you got to do is uh, you put a little hook in them like that. And you bring it up and you're just going to wrap it around the screw. It's kind of tough to do with one hand. But you're just going to wrap it around the screw, get it in there. If I had two hands, it would be a little bit easier. And then you just tighten the screw and you're done. Um, super easy. I just figured I'd show that at least for uh, anybody who's never done anything with wiring at all and same thing here you strip them down i mean i've got wire cutters and uh, uh something like these guys where you just find the right size um and then strip it down and then you connect the leads and boom tighten the screws and you're done so i'm going to do that now because it's easier with two hands and then uh, go back to showing you uh, when i'm finished okay so i'm uh finished i've got this guy coming in and i got my red and my white connected and they're connected properly on this particular uh, Rainbird timer. Uh, that is your master valve and that is your common. And as you can see, I jumped it to this guy as well. And again, I got my master. You can't really see the red, it's kind of hidden. And then my, uh, my master valve and then this one's my common. And the third one I'm not connecting again because it's gonna be my drip system and I don't want the booster pump on that. And I left this line a little longer than I probably would have. I wouldn't mind it being a little tighter. But I know later on I'm going to get a digital timer that uh, I can use with my phone, with an app, and uh, with a little bit more bells and whistles than what this guy has. But for now, these are what I have, and I don't feel like spending 150 bucks on the timer that I want right now. I spent enough getting this together. Um, I'll still have to have two because I can't run the drip system and the booster pump off the same uh, timer. I mean, there's no way to do that. Uh, that I'm aware of so eventually I'll be probably mounting a timer maybe somewhere down here And I want to make sure I have enough play to do it and if I don't I just uh, I'll just connect another wire I'll just uh, join some more wire to it, but that should give me some play uh, And frankly once this is done, I, I don't ever come back here <laughs> So they're not really gonna get touched. So that's gonna probably be it t for today It's getting a little late in the day and I'm uh, I was going to go connect the booster pump. I may actually just run the wire for the valves right now. And then tomorrow I'll get up and uh, connect those. So if I do that, uh, I'll show a little video on that because that's a different way. They connect a little different, but essentially all you're going to do, ah, I'll, I'll cover that when I cover that. Um, so that's it for tonight. I'm going to go have some pizza and uh, drink some whiskey with my wife, uh, just a couple cocktails and watch a movie or something and enjoy the night. So uh, that's it. Thanks for watching.